Now, at one point, you go and sign to Cash Money. Mm -hmm. well, what led up to that? Me not trusting no more labels. Um, me wanting to try something different. Me being at Sony for so long and uh, always hearing, once again, these broken promises, things that they can do for me. Um, I wanted somebody who I knew, somebody I trusted, uh, a friend. I wanted to go in business with my partners. I wanted to be comfortable. And Baby was always somebody who uh, I could hit. Like I said, I wasn't signing Cash Money during my third album. I was on Columbia and Birdman was on my first single. So we always had a dope relationship. It was just, let's make it happen. I remember how it happened. I was in Connecticut doing the Hartford, uh, I think like the Summer Jam or a big radio show in Hartford, Connecticut, like Hot 93 or whatever. And um, I remember being in a hotel room before I went to the, to the arena. And I'm like, yo, Stunner, that was up? I'm like, yo, man, let's just make this shit happen. Like, I'm, I'm free. Let's make it. That shit was done in a week. Mm. It was a no-brainer. I was like, what? It's done. Let's get it. So you sign the cash money, but an album never comes out. Nope. You know, you drop some mixtapes. You throw some songs out. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and cash money always has a lot of artists mm -hmm. on their label. It almost seems like they kind of sign a lot of people and sort of see what happens <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I it ain't like one of these labels where it's like, okay, there's two artists, three artists. You know what I mean? Like, right. for example, like a, like a TDE. Small right. number of artists, everyone's coming out with real Correct. projects like, and so forth. Cash Money's a little bit different. Yeah. Why does an album never come out in Cash Money? For me, it's because I just, I just, it's more than just music. For me, it's, it's if I'm in a studio and I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on this album, but then fucking lottery ticket called. It's like, turned on a movie fucking with Cube? No way. I'm packing up my bag. Boom. Four months out of the studio. Boom. From four months, then a month off back in the studio, but then it's time to go start promoting the film. So now I'm all over the place. That takes like another two months or another month. Yeah. You know, and I took up, I was signed to Cash Money when I did Lottery Ticket. Right. So I took time off to do a movie. I go back in the studio. Right. I'm, 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 I'm working on the album. I'm working on the album. I go on tour. In the middle of working on my album, I got offered a lot of fucking money to come to Europe. I go to Europe, I do a whole month and a half, two months over there, mm -hmm. clean up, come back, try to finish the album, get a call, Australia, New Zealand, six, fi six figures. We go over there real quick, knock out a couple shows. When I got over there, by the time I got back, Stephen Hill called me. 106 in part. 106 in part. That's two years now of TV. Once that bug bit me, I said, oh shit, I done opened up a can of worms. I'm getting all kind of shit now. Now it's just not music. I'm getting checks just for fucking showing up. I'm getting checks now just to come say, host this for what? <laughs> like, what? I, used, I had to sweat for that. Now I just come in 20 minutes, talk, and you want to, what? Man, it was, you know, no way I'm going back in the fucking booth right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and what was so dope and why I love Birdman even to this day, while why I respect them is because, why I respect them. <laughs> some respect on his yeah. name. <laughs> uh, it's because he allowed me to do that. Right. I don't know no label that a sign you give you a whole bunch of fucking money and sit there and say, oh yeah, it's fine for you to just do whatever you want for six years. Oh, I'll pay for oh, all oh, your- Oh, so they gave you a big check. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll let you unlimited studio whenever you want it. Oh yeah, he's going on tour. Then I went on tour here in the States. Me, Brown called me and said, hey yo, Kelly Rowland is ready to go do X Factor. What you doing? I'm like, I'm working on my album. I don't have nothing new right now. Oh, it don't matter, man. You're like the fucking Jay-Z of our generation. You don't even need shit, man. You a bow out. Like, you can just do your old shit and fuck up everything. All right, bro. All right, all right, I'll come. Being a friend, I go on the road with Brown. Birdman's there to support that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With no new music. This is all the classic shit. And um, that's when I respect them the most because I'm like, I don't know who would do this. I don't know nobody who would write a check for you to fucking make some records, but here you are doing TV, you're doing movies, you're hosting parties now, you're doing a million other things other than, but Stunna signs you so that you can become your own boss. He's not gonna tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You come to him when you're ready. I have so much music, I can put Underrated out tomorrow. I can put two green light mixtapes out tomorrow. That's why I don't even have to go to the studio, I ain't been to the studio in forever because okay. I have, millions of fucking records with Wiz, with Wayne, with just so much unheard shit. 
So it's like any time I can just, I can put it together like that. Like, okay. with no problem. But that's why the album never really came. It wasn't like Stunner said no, or it wasn't like, Stunner be like, when young boy, he'll tell you, when the young boy ready, he gonna come to me and we gonna put him out. But the young boy, he got a million fucking things he be doing. That's exactly how Birdman is. Motherfucker just be here, he there, he there. It's, he a lot. Okay. Now, you went on Twitter recently, mm -hmm. and you said, I never liked rapping. Yeah. And I'm done with rap. Yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but it was mm -hmm. essentially that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Where did that come from? Oh, I like to talk to my fans a lot on Twitter, and... Um, I don't be understanding, like, it's weird, like, them fucking blogs, man, they be stalking, like, my Twitter page, like, that's crazy to, like, read, like, these are my fans, like, you know, I'm at a point now, like, I don't even really like to get interviewed no more, unless it's a motherfucker of your stature, or, you know what I mean, you gotta, it's only, like, six people out there interview me right now, because I let my fans do it, because they naturally love me, they're not gonna take my words and spin them, mm -hmm. they, they generally wanna know what's really going on, Whereas the interviewer is getting fucking paid to ask me these questions. He might want to know, but he's, he's here for a job. You know how many times I showed up for a check and didn't give a fuck? Hmm. Just so I can get my check? Like, so every day I get to talk to fans, people that support me. I talk to them as if I talk to Bart or you. So when they, I'm in bed and I'm vaped out and I'm high and I'm sitting <laughs> there and I'm in my bed and I'm chilling at night and I get a question and I feel like answering it. And that's all it was. You know, somebody said... Bow, what's taking you forever? What's taking you so long to give us music? Did it? And I'm like, yo, I don't think y'all really understand. Like, music wasn't first. That wasn't my first. I wanted to be a comedian first. Yeah. Just like I told you. So when my fans see the acting and, wait a minute, he's a better actor than, than a rapper. Well, motherfucker, I've been telling you what I wanted to do, what was first. Comedy was first. Acting was first. Acting is portraying something. So portraying a rapper. Mm ping up a microphone, embodying what I see, what I hear, that's nothing for an actor. But I wanted to be an actor first. Rap just came. So being that this was paying the bills, and I just so happened to be good at it, and I'm getting capped by Snoop and all of the, fuck it, then we gonna ride this wave. Okay. And then at 13, it didn't take long. Then Like I said, come like Mike, the first movie, so then I finally start getting into shit that really, and then when I got that, when I, and that bug bit me for acting when I first did my first couple of shit. It spoiled me. I said, I don't, why am I doing this? So I was like, why am I rapping? I do this shit for two, three months and get paid millions? You know how long it takes you to get paid millions and rap? I have my days, I'm not gonna lie to you, Vlad, where I, I pay attention to what my fans are saying. You know, you're 29, you still can do it. I know I still can do it. It's just about the direction that I want to go in my career now. You know, it's, it, that's what it, I battle with it every day. I'm not going to lie to you, I battle with it every day. I mean, the, the thing with, with music and hip hop in particular, like if you don't really have that passion for it, people kind of see through it. Exactly. You know, it, it, this is why you see certain artists like Jay-Z that can continuously come up with shit and yeah. still react. And you see right. other people who are just kind of going through the motions mm -hmm. and people ain't really fucking with it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I tell my fans, if I'm not feeling it that day, I'm not feeling it that week or that month. I'm not going in there. Like, I'm not going in there. And, you know, like I said, it's just the fact that I've found other ways to, to make bread. And it's just, it's incredible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man, 30 minutes for to host something? You paid 100 grand a episode, 150 uh, bonuses? It's like, shit, in two days, you just made $300,000. Yeah. The fuck you gonna do that at? It's like, I'm not about to go in the booth for fucking two months and be off for two months and just right. be, I can't, I'm not doing that. But, and you also came from an era where people were buying albums. Exactly, so and it's now different. now fans yeah. expect you to drop a bunch of free shit. Exactly. <laughs> and hope they buy the album yeah. later on. Yeah, Buster Rhymes calls me an alien. Yeah. He said, I can't stand you. I remember <laughs> signing it when he signed the cash money. He's like, you're like a fucking hip hop alien, man. He said, you're so young, but you come from our era. Yeah. But motherfuckers look at you like you're not from our era because we're 30, 20 plus years older than you, yeah. but you a young OG, yeah. but you can get cold right now, Bow Wow, and get hot again, get cold again and get hot because you're still fucking young and you look like you're 15. <laughs> so, so speaking of Buster Rhymes, me, me and Buster have been cool for a while. Uh, Buster is off of cash money now. Yep. 
and uh, I know he wasn't happy with uh, with the situation over there. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne and Baby have been going back and forth for a while. I mm -hmm. don't know where exactly they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, being a, a former Cash Money artist. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, are you, you're off of Cash Money now. No. You're still on I'm Cash still Money. You're still on. Signed. You're still on. So if you yeah. dropped another album, it would be Cash Money. Oh, without a doubt. But when you see some of the some of the drama the baby has gone through with, mm -hmm. with his artists and mm -hmm. you know producers he's worked with and everything else like that, like what's your take on it with the relationship that you guys have? Yeah, I just feel like in business, things go good, things go bad. Um, always be prepared for the if crash. I call it the if crash. Some people can go up and ride that wave, and it can just never go away. Like Michael Jackson, it just never went away. Yeah. Um, I always prepare myself for the worst, no matter what. You make a lot of money, be expecting things come with that. Lawsuits come with that. Everybody wants something. Everyone's not going to be happy. I've had workers that work for me that, you know, weren't happy. You know what I mean? Um, it's just the nature of the business. It's how it goes. It's, not, it's nothing new. It's been going on forever. And... Um, you know, I know I can only speak from from my point of view. I've never had any issues with Birdman when it came to money, when it came for things to get paid. Um, I never had that issue. But it kind of only went one way. With <laughs> he paid you a bunch of money, and nothing ever came out. So mm -hmm. it's not like there's all these songs that mm -hmm. you owes. You know, he owes you some money for and stuff right. like that. You never got to experience the other side of things, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Stunner has a lot on his plate. I don't think a lot of people understand. Yeah, I remember, um, he, what has he sold, like a billion albums now? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and I think, you know, Stunner also is the, is the artist as well. Yeah. You know, so sometimes you, people can call Stunner, but Stunner might not be in label exec mode right now. Yeah. He could be in artist mode right now. And if he's in artist mode, as the artist, you're not going to act out as the boss right now until it need yeah so slim, slim handles a lot of the slim is the businessman the businessman yeah he is the businessman if you need business business and you need like go talk to slim but a lot of people don't understand stunner has a lot on his plate it's not even just the artist not even just him as an artist it's, he has his own things outside of music he has going on it was the energy drink vodka it's a million fucking things he has going on and he can't be i get it you know what i mean yeah. shit the fuck up i understand um but then again, you don't know. Like I said, you know, you know, we don't. We, I've had people say uh, he didn't do this for me. Like, motherfucker, you know, we did that for you. Don't like <laughs> stop. Are you serious? And you know, so a lot of times you hear these stories, and even though you might hear them again, they're repetitive. So it makes us believe that there's some type of truth to it. But all I can really say is, from my experiences, you know, like I, I never had an issue. But like you said, I know Buster was. Um, you know, kind of uncomfortable over there. Yeah. And uh, a lot of it comes from, you know, Buss is a fucking legend. And, you know, he's used to, be, he's used to being treated as a certain way. And um, I'm sure he probably thought m maybe going over there he would have gotten that same treatment. And um, maybe he didn't, I'm not sure. Yeah. But it's not like Stunner signed new artists. It's like putting together a fucking all-star team. You're gonna have egos. Yeah. You got Bow Wow. Buster, Nikki, Drake, Wayne. Tiger, Wayne, uh, just even just the Cash Money brand. It's just a lot. Yeah, Jay Sean was. Jay Sean, there. Yeah. it's it's a lot. You know what I mean? And you know, you saw Phil was trying to keep fucking Shaq, <laughs> Kobe, everybody in line. Right. So you know it happens. But like I said, I got the utmost respect for Stunner, man. Fuck, man, Stunner lived right here, bro. I could see Stunner crib from right here. That's still my partner. What was your take when you saw him on the Breakfast Club? Thought it was fucking genius. <laughs> I'll tree <treat> y'all. <laughs> because see, that's a side of stunner I've seen. So I think the reason why it was so big, it, it was it was more of like people never seen stunner like that. Stunner's always cool. He and, he, and stunner don't like to talk. Yeah. He he prefers texting, like text me. <laughs> like it's, it's some crazy shit, but that's just really yeah, how I Birdman I'm, is. I'm the same way, yeah. and I've seen him like that before. So for me, I say, excuse me. The only reason why people are reacting to it is, is funny, but they've never seen Stunner get like this. So this is the first time you've ever seen him out of character, right? And it was just, I mean, it couldn't have went down. No, I'm, uh, as a spectator, that shit was. 
I thought, like, yo, I don't know who gonna beat a Webby interview in the Breakfast Club. I don't know anybody gonna beat. That's entertaining. Oh my God. Right. Like, I mean, there, there were so many one liners. It was oh, like, we man. finished or we done. Oh, man. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, it's everything, you put know. Put some respect on my name. Oh, man. Like, oh, people created a song. He created a song out of yeah, that. No, yeah, no, that's a single off his album. Yeah. yeah, man. So, you know, it's fucking hilarious. Like, I can't even, uh, while we on this subject, shout out to Compton Menace, too, because Menace just signed to, to yeah, Cash and, Money. And uh, ARF. That, yep, that's, and, that's my yeah, homie right yeah, there. Menace, yeah, Menace, that's my him. partner. That's MHG. I'm down for Menace forever, and um, I'm happy for him. And, um, you know, yeah, that, that interview was... Classic. Oh, my God.